warm greetings to all the viewers. This presentation is on the topic immunity. It addresses the undergraduate students of zoology. At the end of the presentation, the students will know about immunity and its type, the different cells involved during immune response, and the way the different cells work during immune response. Alright, let us know what immune system is all about. We have a defense system in our body that protects us against various ailments. We are encountered by various pathogens and various toxic substances most of the time, but we rarely fall ill. This is because the immune system is doing its job very well. This ability of the body to fight against diseases is known as immunity. There are basically two types of immunity, innate immunity and acquired immunity. Innate immunity is the inborn ability to fight against diseases. This includes physical barriers, example, epithelium in the skin and gut, cilia in the airways. Chemical barriers include lysosome in tears and saliva, hydrochloric acid in the stomach. Cellular barriers include white blood corpuscles, basically the neutrophils, basophils, eosinophils, mast cells, dendritic cells, macrophages, monocytes and natural killer cells. The immune response generated by these components of the innate immunity is called innate immune response. The cells of the innate immune response are non-specific. They do not distinguish one invader from another. The cells respond immediately to invasion. And the response is very fast. This is basically because there is no memory associated with it. Acquired immunity is not inborn. It is rather attained during the lifetime of an organism. This includes the lymphoid cells such as B cells and T cells. The immune response generated by these components of the acquired immunity is called acquired immune response. The cells of the acquired immune response are specific for each invader. The cells of receptors distinguish one pathogen from another. The response is not fast. It rather takes a few weeks. And one advantage of this response is that they have immunologic memory. Let us see how the different cells of the immune system originate. There is a process called hematopoiesis that takes place in the bone marrow which gives rise to different cells of the WBC. It all begins with a multipotent hematopoietic stem cell which gives rise to the myelin progenitor cell and the lymphoid progenitor cell. Myelin progenitor cell gives rise to myeloid cells. It includes the granulocytes such as neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil. They are also known as polymorphonuclear cells because the nuclei are not round. Instead, they have multiple lobes. Other myeloid cells are monocytes, macrophage, 
dendritic cell. These three cells are phagocytic in nature. It also includes the mast cell, which is a granulocyte. Lymphoid progenitor cell gives rise to lymphoid cells. It includes natural killer cell, B cell, and T cell. Natural killer cell is a part of the innate immune system, whereas the B cell and the T cell, they are a part of the acquired immune system or the adaptive immune system. T cell completes development in the thymus, whereas the natural killer cell and the B cell, they complete the development in the bone marrow itself. The immune system acts in an orderly manner to combat infection. Whenever there is invasion of any foreign elements, the first line of defense acts to combat the invader. It consists of the physical and the chemical barriers. If the first line of defense fails, then the second line of defense comes into play, which consists of the cellular barriers of the innate immune system. If the second line of defense fails too, then the third and the final line of defense comes into play, which consists of the cellular components of the acquired immune system, that is, the B and the T cells. It's time to see how the cells of the immune system act to combat infection. Let us start with the cells of the innate immune system. First, the neutrophil. During immune response, lots of neutrophils are released. The neutrophil internalizes the pathogen by phagocytosis and forms the phagosome. The granules fuse with the phagosome to form phagolysosome. The molecules from the granules lower the pH and make the environment acidic. This process kills a certain amount of pathogens. The neutrophil continues engulfing more and more pathogens. This process produces oxygen-rich species such as hydrogen peroxide. The molecule destroys nearby proteins and nucleic acid which ends up killing the neutrophil. But by this time, the neutrophil has already killed a lot of pathogens. Neosinophil is a large phagocytic cell that releases histamine and is known to fight parasites. Basophil is a non-phagocytic cell which also releases histamine and is known to fight parasites and play an important role during allergic reaction. Mast cell is non-phagocytic cell. It causes inflammation during allergic reaction. Next comes the monocyte. The monocyte differentiates into macrophage and dendritic cell. The monocyte can stay only in the blood. The macrophage can stay only in the tissue. The dendritic cell can stay in the lymph, blood and tissue. All the three are known as phagocytic cells. They all are antigen presenting cells and can release cytokines. The most prominent antigen presenting cell is the dendritic cell. The way the antigen presenting cells work. Let us take the example of the dendritic cell, which is the predominant antigen presenting cell. Since it is a phagocytic cell, it internalizes the pathogen by the process of phagocytosis. It then processes the antigen into short amino acid chain. The process antigen is presented on MHC molecule. MHC is major histocompatibility complex. After loading it onto MHC molecule, it presents it to a T cell. This process helps connect the innate immune system with the acquired immune system. Next comes the natural killer cell. 
The medial killer cell is a lymphoid cell belonging to the innate immune system. It is a large granulated cell. It basically targets cells infected with intracellular organisms like virus. It releases granules which contains molecules like porphyrins, making the membrane of the target cell porous and causes cytolysis of the cell. When it comes to the choice of the target cell, it is not specific. The cells of the acquired immune system need to be activated before they can work to combat any sorts of infection. First, let us come to the B cell. The B cell can be activated in two ways. If it gets activated without the help of the T cell, then it is known as T independent B cell activation. If it requires the help of the T cell for activation, then it is known as T dependent B cell activation. The type of the activation depends on the type of antigen encountered. If the antigen is non proteinous, B cell activates without the help of T cell. If the antigen is protein in nature, T cell help is required for B cell activation. In T independent B cell activation, the first signal is produced when B cell receptor binds to the antigen by receptor clustering. The second signal is produced when the tall like receptor binds to the antigen. After the B cell gets activated, it differentiates into plasma cells which secrete antibodies into the bloodstream to combat pathogens. In this type of activation, no memory cells are produced. In T-dependent B cell activation, the antigen is protein in nature. It binds to the B cell receptor at specific sites. The antigen gets internalized for processing. The antigen gets processed into short amino acid chains. The antigen in the form of short amino acid chain is loaded on MHC class 2 molecule. As such, we can also say that the B cell acts as an antigen presenting cell. The antigen presented on MHC class 2 molecule binds to the receptor of the helper T cell. The helper T cell can recognize antigen only when presented on MHC class 2 molecule and is also very specific for the antigen. The CD4 molecule from the helper T cell binds to the MHC molecule and activates the cell. The next phase is that the CD4 T ligand expresses on the T cell, which binds with the CD4 receptor on the B cell and enhances the process of activation with the second signal. The next phase is that cytokines, it's interleukin 4, is released from helper T cell, which binds to the receptor on B cell and gives the third and the final signal for activation. With the final activation, the B cell proliferates and gives rise to B cell clones. These cells differentiate into plasma cells, which secrete antibodies into the bloodstream to combat infection. The B cell clones also differentiate into memory cells, which are stored for future combat of the same pathogen at a faster pace. Since the antibodies are released into the circulating bloodstream, this type of immunity is also known as humoral immunity. The T cells are of two types. CD4 positive T cells or helper T cells and CD8 positive T cells or cytotoxic TC cells. Let us see how the helper T cell gets activated. The helper T cell gets activated with the help of antigen presenting cell, most predominantly by the lymphatic cell. It internalizes the pathogen by the process of phagocytosis and processes the antigen. The processed antigen is presented specifically on the MHC class 2 molecule, which can be recognized by the receptor of the helper T cell. The CD4 molecule on the helper T cell binds on the MHC molecule and initiates the process of activation.
B7 protein molecule on antigen presenting cell and CD28 protein on helper T cell bind together giving the second signal for activation. This process of activation releases interleukin 2 from the helper T cell which acts as an autocon and binds to its own interleukin 2 receptor present on the T cell giving the final signal for activation. With the final activation, the T cell proliferates and differentiates its effector and memory T cells. The effector cells work to enhance the post of various immune cells. The memory cells remain to quickly generate effector cells in future encounter of the same pathogen. As explained earlier, the effector helper T cell helps in the activation process of the B cell which differentiates into the plasma cells and memory cells and the plasma cells secrete antibodies into the bloodstream to combat infection. For the activation of the cytotoxic T cell, the process antigen has to be present specifically on MHC class 1 molecule. The CD8 molecule binds to the MHC molecule and activates the cell. Cytokine like interleukin 2 from the helper T cell binds to the interleukin 2 receptor on the cytotoxic T cell. After the final activation process, the T cell differentiates into effector and memory T cells. The memory T cell remains to combat the future attack with foreign pathogens. The effector cell acts on cells infected with intracellular pathogens which present antigens on MHC class 1 molecule. The receptor of the effector cytotoxic T cell recognizes the antigen presented on MHC class 1 of the infected cell. CD8 molecule binds to the MHC molecule and activates the cell. Cytotoxic T cell releases granules to the infected cell which contains molecules like perforin. Perforin causes perforations on the membrane of the target cell which leads to cell lysis and ultimately leading to the death of the cell. Since the cell itself is involved directly in the destruction of the infected cell, it is also known as cell-mediated immunity. Here, let me tell you that the way the cytotoxic T cell acts is almost similar to the way the natural cell killer cell acts. The main difference is that while the natural killer cell is not specific with the choice of the infected cell, Cytotoxic T cell specifically acts on infected cell which presents antigen or MHC class 1 molecule. This is all about immunity and the way the different cells act to combat infection. I have tried to be as comprehensive as possible. I hope the students benefit from this. These are a few suggested readings which the students can go through. Thank you.